Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Ava DuVernay's career, we will be talking about Middle of Nowhere. Middle of Nowhere is about Ruby, a registered nurse in Compton who dedicates most of her time to visiting her husband in prison. Her dedication to him does cause various issues where her career becomes rather stunted, a mother who is bitter over the expectations she has for her daughters, and Ruby even has distanced herself from her own sister. So when Ruby's husband is close to becoming paroled, she begins to find things out that really shatter her reality. Okay. So, before I dive into this review, there is something that happened after my first review of Ava's. I wanted to address it because as it stands for someone like myself, this was a lightning in a bottle moment. So I'm going to talk about this for a little bit. Um, I, if you want to skip ahead, I will give you a timestamp here soon. Uh, you can follow it and get straight into the review, but um, this is kind of a big segment that I have to address. When I reviewed Ava's first feature-length film, I Will Follow, I got this. I got this tweet just before the afternoon hit. I was on the road uh, working. I'm a delivery driver, and, you know... <laughs> The feelings I had during the next eight hours had to be suppressed because <laughs> I had to be safe. My mind was going through a thousand and one thoughts with the simple ones being, uh, do I respond? Do I leave it be? What do I do? What do I say? I felt saying something back couldn't be comprised in one simple tweet. Which is why I wanted to take the time until now on a video to say something. So, I'm going to take kind of a risk here because there's a chance that Ava may never really watch another review of mine. Which is okay. I mean, if she ultimately never does because, you know, life does get busy and, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, things happen, you know, but if there's ever a chance, that's okay. But I would like to address it on here and... Let this be the response. So, if you're not Ava, or if you want to know what I have to say, then please proceed. But if you want to get into the review, timestamp here. Enjoy. I have no doubt in my mind when you watch this review of I Will Follow, you would have thought I would have hated it. Probably, and I'm just guessing, you were probably grumbling under your breath thinking, oh, this, what is this guy going to say about my movie? What the hell does he know? He better not say anything bad about it. You know? I don't usually... <laughs> I don't usually go into any film thinking I'll hate it right away. I'll have my doubts and I'll have some sort of like, I don't really feel like watching it, but, you know, it's just... What I would like to do is give a film a chance to tell its story. Where this really all comes from is that I have friends that give me a hard time that I'm not reviewing anything outside the box. And I need to be exposed to films that show the differences in race and culture and, you know, all that stuff. And I get that push ever so often where I, I think that it came to a head for me. Uh, this push did affect me in ways that made me feel like I needed to expand my horizons. The one thing that you did in I Will Follow that made me fall in love with it was the fact that you made your characters human, first and foremost. You kept the characters' humanity in check. And on top of that, you gave me a story I could relate to. I lost people close to me and found comfort the same way May did. So there was no way in hell I could just up and dislike a film like this that felt personal, self-discovering, and driven. So even if I disliked the film, um, I would have at least explained why. I would hate to be disrespectful to someone's work, even if I felt it was nothing more than a cash grab. You know, I... I if you ever go to any of my older reviews, I hammer down some something hard on some of these films that I thought were cash grabs and you know it's easy anger pit you know can 
be an easy tool to use to get anybody to notice you. But at the point of constructive criticism has been a big pull for me. And I really have been trying to learn how to explain how I feel about things other than the simple words of, I didn't like it, or I loved it. I always, I always wanted to explain why. But I do have a question for you if you catch this. Um, I was very curious about uh, what aspect of the film did I bring up that was rarely discussed? I thought maybe you were refer referring to the music and the love for it, but I could be wrong. But I am curious as to what you what you meant. Be that as it may, I am very happy to be reviewing your films. Uh, I made this choice because I really wanted to diversify directors. I mean, it's easy to go to the next person like Christopher Nolan or J.J. Abrams, which I will get to one day, but it's like, it's easy to go to those because that can just gain more pull and, oh yeah, yeah, of course, I love this film and I love that film, blah, blah, blah. I really wanted to do something a little off the beaten path, but I also do feel like a little fanboy going crazy over your tweet because in my eyes, you're a director of considerable power and you have a very strong voice. Since you've noticed me, little bitty me, um, and, and what you, the time you took to watch my review of something that you made, your beautiful film, I really just, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your day to do that. It certainly made an impact on my life, and you've made an impact on mine well before that tweet. Lastly, I told many, 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 many people about this encounter. Maybe too many. Um, but to those who read the tweet outside the Twitterverse, they all said you compared me to Ebert. You didn't compare me to Ebert. No. no. I mean, come on. You were just reminiscing, right? You weren't comparing me to <laughs> uh, Ebert. That's my response to you, Miss Ava. I hope that you enjoy my journey in your filmography. We're going to get into your second film that I could get my hands on, which I had to buy, by the way, which had like zero streaming availability, which really sucked. Hey, spoilers, I bought it. <laughs> okay, so diving into Middle of Nowhere, I couldn't help but feel like I was given the same looking glass as I Will Follow gave me. And while I Will Follow was a film about a, a, a reflection of uh, past and present actions, forcing May to look at her future through the help of friends, family, and strangers, Middle of Nowhere is that same lens, uh, just told through someone else's eyes in a different area with a different profession. Kind of like same universe, just on a different place of the world. The situation Ruby is going through is a little more intense with unfortunate, uh, an easy picture painted for her. Um, then she realizes that picture isn't so simple as it may seem. Ultimately, I realized that this was another quiet film that shows the repercussions of one actions in not necessarily real time, but we're very present and accounted for with everything that's going on, even if it's over a period of a quite a few years. Where I found I Will Follow's um, story already had those actions said, done, and over with, it was about figuring out where to go from there. Middle of Nowhere is at least posing the same argument of the same thing and says, we may not know where to go next. I mean, we can go there. Uh, no, it doesn't look as appealing. Oh, we might go over there. Or over there. Or up there. And that's pretty ballsy, considering how much moviegoers and film lovers like myself I love a clear and definitive road by the end of the journey. This movie is shot the same way as I Will Follow, giving you the lens like a fly on the wall, and at the mercy of these characters, filling you in as they go along. That really makes it more real. Emiazzi Coronaldi, I might have butchered that name, please forgive me, is exceptionally good here as Ruby. As you watch her along this journey of not only figuring things out, but dealing with the ridicule, you see she's trying to keep it all together, emotionally, financially, and mentally. As each situation hits where she is holding on to hope, it's formed and morphed and warped as 
her reality is disturbed. I, she just really balances emotion here. She's exceptional. And unfortunately, I haven't seen her in any other of her works. In her travels, she meets David Oyelowo's character, who's exceptionally good in this film as well. I would say his character comes in at a rather complicated time for Ruby, so it gives her a foundation to stand on while she struggles, but that's not to say that they don't struggle together uh, as they find each other out bit by bit. I really can't say anything else without talking about Omari Hardwick. He plays Derek, the husband, locked up in jail, and he gives quite the performance here as he's practically constricted and constrained in emotions given the environment he's in. He carries a lot of emotion on his face and his scenes were really well handled. God, when I, when I think about all the characters in this film, uh, and I'm, that goes for the sister that Ruby has and her mother, even the little one, I mean everyone. Everyone carries a certain amount of weight to their performance that helped me see all the given sides to make this more than just a superficial movie about a woman's struggles. There was no, leave it implied and you know it's, it's going to be great because they're going to see it on her face and there's no payoff. You know, there's no, oh, look at Ruby, isn't she struggling? Isn't she struggling? Hey, they don't. They don't patronize you. The story does not patronize you. Everything worked on the level it was presented and it really shows the hardships through silence and through nuanced character ticks and beats and bits of dialogue that can be awkward, but they're just... Okay. I'm gonna calm down here for a second. <laughs> the second thing I, I guess I really want to get at is the writing. The dialogue is exceptional here, and dare I say it's better than I Will Follow's. It was, oh, wow, it's good, definitely good. I was glued to Middle of Nowhere far faster than I was with I Will Follow. From the moment it began to the moment it ended, I wanted more. Um, as much as I appreciated the we may not know where to go from here moments, it was like, no, I want to see where you go. I want to see more. Give me a sequel. I want to <laughs> I wanna, I wanna know. Um, Ava has definitely shown how exceptional she is at dialogue, emotional moments, and situational drama. There are three confrontations in this film I have to praise straight up, and it's... I can't get too specific because I don't want to get into spoilers, but all of these arguments are just handled so freaking well. They're showing a fierce side of Ruby, a strong side, her vulnerability, and even quiet side. Um, Ava uses the use of silence to her advantage more so here, and it really, really works. Looking into this film, uh, Ava speaks about how she did research and examined the lives of women in Compton. And what she shows and pays off here is a more in-depth look of a woman's grief as everything is still in flux. Ruby is still trying to make something out of her situation despite her feelings, the pressure surrounding her, and with inside of herself. If you would call this... Um, a drama, of course. I, I know that there are films like the coming-of-age stories, like it's a child's transition into an adulthood. I would call this film um, a coming-of-identity story. It's definitely watching where you once were and growing as a person, knowing that there's more behind the veil and accepting it, questioning it, trying to understand it, misunderstanding it, and then trying to recapsulate it and try to do something new with it. It's just coming into your own identity. And look, at the end of the day, this movie was far more wonderful in its subject material and execution than I can ever give it credit for. And for that, I loved Middle of Nowhere and own it on DVD. Simple as that. I own it and I love that I own it. It wasn't even a gamble. I just knew that I had to. Oh, which reminds me. As an added bonus, I bought I Will Follow. Um, 
so I can up that as well. I love, I will follow, and own on DVD. Simple as that, too. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you've seen Middle of Nowhere, let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell so you don't miss another video. With all that said, I hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Until next time.